two in the sanctuary. And if you look long enough and carefully enough, I think you might be able to pick it out. Um, and there are, that really just leaves a couple of other things still missing, which we're again hoping uh, might uh, be put into place before next weekend. So, so progress continues. Um, the new pulpit in place. I'll say now because I don't want to forget to say anything, and I don't want to have to explain to all of you on your way out of church. Those are not going to be the final steps. Uh, those were steps that came with the pulpit. They were modified so I could get up there today. Uh, but there will be some different steps made uh, and fall into place uh, later as well. Well, enough of that. Let's turn our attention to God's Word. Let's heed His voice and listen to His powerful Word. I invite you to stay. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, for his sake forgives you all your sins as a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the hymn.
Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens and give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. And so do it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God.
the epistle is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the, ready, the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Oh, 
overlooked by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
of His Word. God's Word is so different than our words. Oh, we might try to make something so by simply saying it, maybe with a lot of authority. You will clean your room. Or we may even try to repeat lies and maybe half-truths, hoping to somehow spin or, or create a new reality. But His Word, His Word is mind-blowingly incredible. It's not just descriptive or prescriptive. It is created. It does what it says. It makes things be by its own power. If my words were more like God's word, well, then as of yesterday, a screwdriver and a stubborn slotted screw would now be in hell. But when God says, when God speaks, it is. His word makes, creates, shapes life itself. His word is truth and he cannot lie. When God speaks, I wonder how many of you remember the old commercials about Ia Titan? When God speaks, everyone listens. When God speaks, things happen by the power of His Word. Now in our reading from the Gospel of St. John today, we're told about the second of the seven signs that Jesus does, that he performed. Oh, there were more. John doesn't try to record them all, but he does record these seven as evidence that Jesus was so much more than just another man. He was so much more than just a great teacher or an example, or even a good moral person. He was, even as he is right now, God himself. And so sometimes he simply speaks. He says, and it is. Sometimes he uses water even walking on it on one occasion. Sometimes he touches, and other times he uses dust and spit, or he uses bread and wine to accomplish his signs. But today, today he simply speaks. Your son lives. Or, in the King James, your son liveth. And he does. He does. Death is held off. And life remains in the man's son. All by the power of Christ's word. Now, the ESV is a little wimpy in the translation here. Because the official comes to Jesus because his son was dying. It's not that he was close to death. He was dying. And then Jesus chides he and everyone else. He uses a plural form of you. We might want to translate it as y'all. And he chides them about the faith that clings only to sight rather than to God's word. 
and the official that pleads. But come, oh come, he's dying. And Jesus, and Jesus says, your son lives. And the servants say later that at that moment, the son was healed. And he was restored to heaven. We shouldn't be surprised. God says, and it is. <laughs> so, you would think then that maybe people would listen when God speaks. But what does happen when God speaks? Well, some listen, to be sure. And some listen a little better than others. But many won't. Many don't. Many can't. And God has spoken in a variety of ways. And his word comes to us today in Holy Scripture and handed down to us via the church. How well do we do listening? Sometimes, maybe a little better than others. But other times, probably not so much. You know, we know things too, right? We know how things should be. We know how things would be better. We know what we want. We know what we need. And so sometimes it's hard to listen to God's word. But that doesn't change the effectiveness and the power inherent to his holy word. And God, and God has spoken. He does speak even today. And he will speak one day. And on the last day, he will declare his verdict. Guilty or innocent. And it will be as he declares. Guilty.
spit, and the nails, his suffering, his abandonment, hell, as he hung there on the cross. He hears our verdict. And he pays the wages of our sins. Why? It's actually quite simple. So that the verdict that God will speak over you might be innocent. And so that paradise might be your eternal reward. That's why he did it. God speaks and it is. God said, go and make disciples by baptizing, by teaching. God said, if one of my guys forgives your sins, then they are forgiven. God says, this is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. God has spoken. And we know the power of his word. God has spoken. And he has claimed you as one of his own. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God has spoken and absolved you of all your sins in the name of the triune God. And God has spoken and then put into your mouths the body and blood of our living Savior, Jesus Christ. The bread of heaven. The bread of life. God has looked at you trembling under the cross of His Son and declared you to be innocent. God said, you are innocent, and it is so. Amen. We stand for prayer. Lord, have mercy. 
For those who are sick, ill, awaiting surgery, or undergoing treatment, for those who in any way are suffering in their bodies or minds, those who have requested our prayers, and those we now name in our hearts, that they would receive peace in the midst of their afflictions, and whatever healing is in accord with God's gracious will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn, that they would be comforted with the proclamation of the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of new life that you have granted to Derek and Katie, and that their new son would be kept safe until he can be brought to the waters of holy baptism. And for all those mothers that bear within their womb the gift of new life that you have created, O oh Lord, keep them connected to their Savior, and let them set an example for their children that they too might be rooted in the true faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for out of your great goodness you have created us, and out of your great mercy you have redeemed us from our sin, which brings such hardship to your creation. Confident in the love that you have for us in Christ Jesus, we bring these petitions to you in his name, knowing that you will abundantly supply all our needs of body and soul without fail. For you ever live and reign with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated in the offering. Bye. 
Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Welcome to the Lord's table. 